one of the guys who was in charge of this project, he he wanted something that was just he didn't want something just pretty good or mediocre, make some hydrogen great, you know, you're you're gonna market hydrogen. This guy has a daughter who has ALS, you know, Lou Gehrig's disease. Uh, my understanding is that she was born with it, if I remember correctly. And they told him that his daughter would be lucky to make it to the age of five. So she was going to die. And that was very sad. And he had knowledge about hydrogen. And he really believed that it would make a difference in her life based on the data. And he wanted to develop. Think, I got to just say, thank God for this guy. Because he wanted to develop the best hydrogen machine in the world for home use. That's what he wanted to do. And the reason that this is really great is that he didn't go into it thinking, I want to make a bunch of money. <laughs> I got to figure out where to cut corners. You know, that's not how he apparently went into this. He wanted to do the best. And so he would ask help from other industries. In Japan, a lot of people work together. A lot of these industries work together. It's kind of a cultural, very interesting thing that I think the world could, um, could learn a lot. Um, from the Japanese in regards to this. And so he got help from like, like I said, I think it was Yamaha, Toyota, G-Shock, and this uh, very interesting metal company, which probably most of us have never heard of. And they have this patented process and of the, making the metal that was required for this device. Though originally, apparently when they requested the metal and what they wanted, the company straight up told them it's impossible. N nobody can make what you're requesting. And I think it took a year, if I remember correctly, for that company to say, we made a breakthrough, we can do it. They patented the process because nobody can do it, which is funny though, because I remember being told, they said it was funny about the patent um, because they said that it was probably unnecessary, it was an unnecessary patent because they said that even if they didn't patent it, they don't believe anybody could do it anyway. So it was a technology that they didn't believe anybody could replicate regardless. And ultimately this guy just wanted to make the best the Japanese were like, no, we want to do everything in Japan, everything in-house. I want this done correctly. And he knew that it would cost more money to do it that way. But he wanted, he was so adamant about doing it right because he was thinking about his daughter. I mean, this was really for his daughter. And that was his goal. And what was really a beautiful thing is that the machine ended up surpassing their highest expectations the machine ended up being better than they ever even expected the purity of the hydrogen you know the the reliability too which is another thing that most people don't talk about but reliability issues with hydrogen machines and so one of the things that he really went after was reliability because i remember them explaining to me how they were stress testing the machine and and making sure that it'd be reliable and they made it very simple so they made the machine really simple but specific components that were crucially important to make in the hydrogen of the highest quality. And those components required a lot of high technology, just the metal itself. So you can make a device that looks really cool. It's kind of like a car. You can make a car that looks really cool, but just has some crappy engine that's always breaking down and it's terrible, you know, or you could have a car that maybe doesn't have the most fancy interior, maybe doesn't look that good, but boy, does it have one of those bulletproof engines and will just go a million miles, you know, like a lot of the Toyotas do. So that's what they did with the HydroFix. You know, they didn't, they didn't seem to spend a lot of time or money trying to make it super, super fancy looking as much as they were concerned with just the quality of the hydrogen. And like I said, they, they surpassed their goal. One of the things that that they did in the world of hydrogen is they had all these industries helping them. I mean, they, I mean, for example, just Yamaha, uh, you know, Yamaha is the one who developed the cannula for the machine. It's not a normal cannula. That's, that's the other thing people don't understand. They think, Oh, I can just grab any cannula and in inhale hydrogen. They discovered that that wasn't possible because they were measuring everything. And that's one thing. A lot of these companies are not really measuring anything. They don't even have the right equipment to do it. Um, in fact, some of the best equipment for measuring hydrogen is from Japan. So you can't really even get it at other places. And these cannulas would lose the hydrogen. It would literally dissipate through the cannula. So Yamaha was working on some type of special project. I think it was with some type of hydrogen motorcycle or something. And they needed this special tubing. And that's what they ended up using for the cannulas. I, you know, that's what I learned. And, uh, it, I've, I just, I asked, I've, I've asked those guys so many questions about everything they've done. And they've always been very uh, they've always replied to me, answered my questions, and I've bugged them so much. And they were probably always wondering, who is this guy? By, by the way, that guy's daughter, who was supposed to be lucky to make it to the age of five years old, you know how old she is now? She's like 12, 13 years old now. 
they have been making improvements on the machine that have just boggled my mind. When the 2018 model came out, I thought, okay, it's about as good as it gets. And then they found a way to make not only the water better, a higher hydrogen gas inhalation, but they also found, and they found ways to make it even more reliable, which was already quite reliable. But one of the things that, that they ended up doing, and this was, I believe, in their 22, 23 model, one of some of the more newer stuff, they started doing something that nobody's done with hydrogen, like almost like doing a type of structuring of the hydrogen. And, and then they also improved on their metal technology. So the 2018 model had really good metal technology. The 22 model is even better. So they already had better metal technology in hydrogen than anybody in the world of hydrogen. And then they, they stepped it up. They took it to the next level, even though nobody had caught up yet. It's kind of like Tesla, you know, Tesla's always kind of ahead of the game on so many things and everybody's playing catch up. These guys are way ahead of everybody. It's, I mean, it really isn't even close. This is a really well-balanced machine as far as reliability, the amount of hydrogen, the purity of the hydrogen, the cost of the device, being able to make the water and the gas inhalation. It's just really well-balanced as far as everything it can do. Once you try to go to a different level, the price is going to increase a lot. They really found a super beautiful sweet spot. And the machine ended up being so good. I mean, they use it in medical centers over there. I mean, I believe like even hospitals made special requests from this company in regards to hydrogen because these guys are, they're the elite in hydrogen. There, there is nobody better that I've seen. And if there was, I would gladly talk about it. 